Welcome to the Northwest Ministry Network Kids Camp Staff Training video. Here you are, about to begin a short-term stint as cabin staff. And there are hundreds of thoughts swirling around your head right now. Questions like, why did I say yes? And I hope the kids like me. And what if the routine and rules are more than I bargained for? And I hope I can use my cell phone and get a decent shower. I wish I knew what the Bible verses were so I could brush up on them. I can think of three kids who better not end up in my cabin. Who do I turn to if things get out of hand? And the questions and thoughts run on and on and on. Well, relax. This adventure is entirely survivable and will be tremendously rewarding. In future years, you may even look back on this as a turning point in someone's life, maybe even your own. The purpose of camp is to create an environment where children experience God in a life-changing way. This is done with integrity in an intentional, non-manipulative manner through cabin devotions, chapels, and group activities throughout the entire week. You'll spend more time with the campers in one week than in a whole year at your church. The impact we have on the lives of the camper is phenomenal. During your week at camp, remember that many people are praying for you. So have fun, enjoy yourself, and help the kids to experience God in a life-changing way. Thank you for giving a week of your life to impact a group of children for eternity. What to expect when you arrive at camp? You'll be assigned a group of campers. You'll sleep in their cabin, eat with them, attend chapel with them, participate in games with them, and pray with them. Your participation is expected in all of camp life throughout the week. Ensure that your campers attend all meals, activities, power play sessions, and chapel services with enthusiasm. Help the timid enter into group participation as well. If they protest, claiming sickness, contact the leadership team for assistance in this manner. You may need time off during the week, but your first responsibility is to the campers. Prepare carefully for this time off. Utilize other cabin staff or leadership team to super supervise your cabin uh, so you can get some of that alone time to shower, to nap, or read your Bible, or pray. Never leave your campers unsupervised, however. You should know your physical limitations. A tired or sick staff doubles the workload for someone else. Take advantage of any and all rest periods. Unless there's a staff event, we ask that you remain in your cabin with your kids at night. A tired staff person flies off the handle, loses credibility with the kids, or at the minimum, lacks enthusiasm. Remember that your cabin staff, not counselors. Don't attempt to counsel children uh, in sensitive personal or family issues. You are the primary role model for your group of, uh, of Christianity, cleanliness, sportsmanship, and teamwork. You'll be the key to successful discipline. Your skill in dealing with campers determines to a considerable degree how well these campers will enjoy and benefit from their week. Our goal is to provide a camp that's so exciting and stimulating that discipline is rarely needed. When discipline is needed, the cabin staff should always carry out any threats that you've made. Rely on the directing staff to be the quote-unquote heavy if necessary. You are fully supported by the directing staff. You're under the supervision of the camp leadership team, and if you have any questions about your responsibilities, remember the leadership team exists to support you. We do have three main impact environments during this week of camp. The morning chapel, which is the main spiritual emphasis time. Then there's the small group discussion time, where they are really able to apply it practically into their lives. And then there's the evening response chapel, which is mainly worship with some time of prayer to be able to cement into their lives what God is already saying or doing in their life during this week of camp. How do you handle small group devotion time with your cabins? Uh, it's always best to get all of your campers together in a bunk or in a group setting. Uh, utilize written discussion questions if they are available to you. Uh, you would do well to ask a lot of questions and to get the kids talking rather than feel an obligation to be a teacher during this time, but instead a discussion facilitator is best suited here. Uh, you can also review chapel notes and scriptures from chapel or what you've learned. Uh, individually, one at a time, ask your kids also what God did in their lives in the previous day or previous chapel times. Uh, you might be wise to ask your kids, go around from bunk to bunk, kid to kid, and ask what they really want or need God to do in their life while they are at camp. Nighttime, uh, it's always good to ask for prayer needs, pray a really, really, really long prayer. Uh, the longer your prayer is, the more kids are going to fall asleep during this time. What do you bring to camp? 
In addition to what is in the camper booklet that we're wanting all campers to bring, which you should bring those too, here are some things that we find that we always wish we had with us while we were at camp. Is uh, Sometimes uh, an extra pair of sandals, an alarm clock, a fan, an extension cord for that fan, uh, some tape, both masking and scotch tape seems to come in very handy. Push pins, because we're always wanting to hang stuff up in our rooms, it seems like. And decorations. Uh, get some colored paper and white paper. Maybe bring uh, a pair of scissors or two. Markers and pins. Seems like a Sharpie is always useful in our cabins. And every time I don't pack one, I wish I had one or eight of them. A skit idea. Bring some glue. Christmas lights are always kind of a fun touch for, for your room as well. Uh, a dustpan. Candy bribes. That's usually for the cabin inspections. Uh, here I'm going to actually take some time to let some campers talk to you about their perspective of what they need from you while they are at camp. I'm the reason this camp is taking place. You might find me high strung, low keyed, <laughs> confused, or totally on track. No matter my age, disposition, or social status, here's what I expect you to do. I need you to have fun. I will get excited about things that excite you, but... I must know that you really want to connect with me. You must earn the right to be heard by enjoying being with me. I need you to set limits. It might not seem like I want limits, especially in the first few hours at camp, but if you do not say any, I will not respect you. When you do set them, like lights out, respecting others, following rules, I will expect you to be consistent and impartial. I need you to discipline with love. Remember, I'm not as old as you and I will make mistakes, sometimes not understanding what I've done. Give me reasons for the discipline. When you correct me, be reasonable, gentle, and firm. Losing your cool, and you will lose my respect. If you grab, shake, or hit me, you will probably hear from the authorities and my father's lawyer. I need you to listen. One thing I usually don't get at home is a chance to express myself, my fears, my joys, and my dreams. By carefully listening, you will earn a chance to get next to me. Take it one step further. Ask me to clarify something you do not understand, and I will be your friend for life. Maybe literally. I need you to keep things in confidence. You will earn my respect and trust if you keep the personal things between you and me. However, if I tell you something that indicates I'm in danger of being harmed physically or emotionally, you'll need to report that to the camp director. I need you to offer praise. Catch me doing something good and make a big deal of it. Usually at home, the opposite happens. You will raise my self-esteem to the sky. All of us like and need to be built up. And this can't provide so many opportunities to make it happen. I need you to be a good example. You cannot say one thing and do another. If you do, you've lost your credibility. In other words, I'm looking to see what being a Christian is all about and how real God's word is in your life. I need you to remember my age. Our culture pushes us to grow up too fast. Discourage me from flirting with the opposite sex and help me to learn and understand what modesty means. I need you to remember what it felt like when you were my age. Don't forget how you responded to adults that were harsh. Remember what that, what the peer pressure felt like. Remember what it felt like when adults talked down to you. Remember what it was like to have a grown-up believe in you, connect with you, and encourage you. When you arrive at your camp, there are three main components to the check-in process. First one is you need to get your cabin assignment. Find out what cabin number you will be in. And then the second one, you need to get all medications to the nurse. All campers medications and all cabin staff medications need to be turned in, even aspirin and ibuprofen. If there's a chance that a camper could get into it and misuse it during the week, it needs to be turned in to the nurse. And finally, money for the bank and for the, that helps to support the snack shack and for missions offering as well. All of that comes out of the bank and all money needs to be turned into that. It is a cashless camp. All money needs needs to be turned into the bank so there's no money in our rooms. Begin praying for the kids in your cabin ahead of time. Even if, even if you don't know who they are, begin praying for them now. You are the key to the camp experience. I cannot stress to you enough how important your role is at our camps in the Northwest Ministry Network. The key to success of our camps is our cabin staff. Get some rest now as part of your preparation for a fulfilling, exhausting week of creating environments where kids experience God in a life-changing way. See you at camp.